What is going on everybody, it's Steven here and welcome back to another console modding video. Now it has been a long time since my last console video because my damn Xbox 360 broke down after finishing the Arch Tech tutorial but I will still finish it and upload the last part and yeah I will also bring you a reset glitch hack tutorial but I need some time so maybe in the next weeks. But today we'll check out something different because today I want to show you how to play with mouse and keyboard on your console. Now this works on the PS4, Xbox One, PS3 and Xbox 360. And you can even use a Wiimote or other controllers on every console with this little device here which is the Titan one from ConsoleTuner.com. Now this little device here is not bigger than a normal USB drive and it retails for something like $70 or $60 directly on ConsoleTuner.com. And this little device allows you to play with mouse and keyboard on your console. Also you can use different controllers on different consoles and with that I mean you can play with a Xbox 360 controller on your PS4 or with a PS4 controller on your Xbox 360 and this is absolutely nice. Because for instance, yeah, you just have to buy the stick then you can play with a different controller if you don't have a second one on your other console and you can even play with the Logitech G27 steering wheel on your Xbox One or PS4. And this is totally dope. Also it allows you to turn any controller into a rapid fire controller. You don't need to solder anything into the controller or on the controller. And yeah, this is perfectly nice. You can also rebind buttons to other buttons. And this is totally cool. So you should definitely check it out. The link is down below in the description. And now I would say let's get started and let's have a look at the Titan one from ConsoleTuner.com. Now as always here's a quick unboxing so let's see what we can find inside of the box and the unboxing is very short because actually there's not that much included. I have here the Titan one so let's have a look at this one here and you can see it has a LCD display and I think three or four lines so it can display digits and also here we have a button and I'm not really sure what the button is doing but yeah we'll find it out a bit later. And screen looks quite okay, there's also a LED somewhere here. And yeah, here the Titan 1 logo, then the USB connector 2.0. And it's absolutely lag free as you will see later. So here you can see input. And for instance your controller will be connected to the input side. And the output side, which is the connector, will be connected to the USB port of your console. Then here's another USB port and this is the PC programming port. Now this little baby has to be connected to a PC in order to use mouse and keyboard on your console or to load up scripts. So you have to have a laptop or something near your console where you connect the Titan 1 to. And here on the back side we can see output side, so the USB connector is the output. Here we have a little hole and in there there's a reset button. So if you press it then you are in programming mode and if you for instance brick it during a firmware update you can restore it or if it just hangs up. So yeah, basically that's the Titan 1, then let's see what other things we can find inside of the box. Also included if you buy the bigger package, so the $90 package is a Bluetooth receiver. And this is very good because if you're using a PS4, then the PS4 controller is connected with Bluetooth to the console. And if you want to use it with the Titan 1, then you need such a Bluetooth receiver. This one here is very small, gold plated and yeah, you get it very cheap. Then here you can see the mini USB cable, so this one here is included and yeah, it's about 1 meter long and with that you have to connect it to your computer. Then let's have a look at the Titan 1 quick guide. Because this basically tells you everything you need to know. So it's actually quite easy to use but you really have to tinker around with the software because there are so many settings to adjust and it's really not easy if you do it for the first time. Then let's have a look at the usage overview. Here you can see everything you can do with the Titan 1. Like play with mouse and keyboard over a computer on your console. But you can also for instance use different controllers, like you can even play Call of Duty with a Wiimote on your PS4. There are many crazy things you can do, but yeah, if you have a Xbox 360 wireless controller, you need a special receiver. But for instance PS4 or PS3 controllers work with the Bluetooth receiver, and all wired controllers work perfectly nice with the USB port right over here. So as you can see, that are all the functions of the Titan 1, but also there's something you cannot see here. This is the Logitech G27, which also works with the Titan 1, as you will see later, so steering wheels on different consoles. And I would say, let me quickly show you how to set it up, 
And let me also show you why I actually have bought this one. Alright guys, so let me quickly show you my gaming setup. And I know it looks quite weird because I have so many things connected right over here and I don't have that much space. But here is my Xbox One which is connected to a Samsung 4K monitor, which is quite useless because all the textures are not 4K. Then here we have a 10 port USB hub connected to my computer and the Titan One and mouse and keyboard are connected to the 10 port hub because I switched this a lot. And even though I'm using the 10 port hub, there's absolutely no input lag. Then here you can see the Titan One and let me just show you all the connections. Now here at the bottom, this is a USB extender from the Xbox One. So it's connected to the console. Then the upper part here is connected to the Xbox One controller, which you can see right over here. And it has to be turned on and properly detected by the Titan One. Then this mini USB cable here connects the PC programming port of the Titan One to the computer. And yeah, I'm using the 10 port USB hub, but there is absolutely no input lag. Then you can see it's already on, but not properly detected right now. So we have here a zero on the display but the Xbox One is on and we still have to configure it on the computer as you will see a bit later. Now I'm using a Roxio GameCap HD Pro to record all this. We are playing a little bit Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. It really sucks, I hate this fucking game. Then as input devices, we'll first of all use the Logitech G502, which is the perfect mouse for me, so I really love this thing. Not too expensive, so $70 or something. Then here we have a keyboard, mid-range keyboard, the Logitech G105. It retails for something like $60 and I also really love that keyboard. So perfectly nice to play on a console. Now all that is connected to my computer which we have right over here. This is the only bad thing so you have to have your computer near your console. I mean here it's working perfectly nice but yeah, if it's in your living room that could be a problem. Alright guys, now before we configure it, let me tell you why I have actually bought this device here. So here you can see my Logitech G27 racing wheel. And I really love it, it's the perfect racing wheel, but yeah, it doesn't work on the damn Xbox One or PS4. And I did spend hours with this one here playing GT6 on the PS3 and I really love it because yeah, here we have the shifter, it's a 6 gear shifter, we have foot pedals, like also clutch, and yeah, it's not too expensive, so I really love this racing wheel, really high quality, but it doesn't work with Forza 5 on the Xbox One and this makes me so damn mad. Alright, so here we have my PS3 and yeah, I'm playing GT6 with this one here, but I want to play Forza 5 on the Xbox One, because yeah, it's a newer game and I just want to do this. But no, Microsoft won't let me play with. So I had to buy the Titan One in order to make the G27 work on the Xbox One, and this also works on the PS4 with some other games. So pretty cool, here we have my monitor, also with Oculus, so... Um, Euro Truck Simulator 2 is also a nice game, so you should definitely check this out with Oculus and the G27, this is really awesome. But let's just focus on the Titan one and let me show you how to play with mouse and keyboard on your console. Okay, so we're now here on the computer and I did already show you how to connect it, but yeah, before you connect it you should download and install the G-Tuner software, because yeah, this is the software for the Titan one and this also installs the drivers for the Titan one. Okay, so the Titan one is now connected. G-Tuner installed, make sure you run it as administrator, so there we go, just to make sure. Then in the Titan 1, yeah, this just looks like a web page or something, so this is an online library. And in here you can find a lot of scripts for the Titan 1. And yeah, I'm not using the scripts here in this video, so there would be rapid fire, also there should be auto aim, but yeah, mostly for single player, I guess, I'm not sure how this is working. But there are many, many cool things, and you can check them out right over here like um, modded profiles for um, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Yeah, you really have to practice that because, for instance, drop shot here on some buttons and quick melee, rapid fire, whatever. So some really cool things and also, for instance, to compensate recoil, but yeah. They were not really working for me, but you should definitely check this out, so pretty cool things, but I don't use it online because, yeah, it's very unfair. Okay, so that is the online library where you can download those scripts. But let's now have a look here at the plugins, and here we have the plugin manager. And you first of all have to install some plugins, and if you want to play with mouse and keyboard on your console, you have to download MaxAim. And be sure to download the Titan 1 exclusive version. So just go here to install, it's now installed, and yeah, then it will download this one here. Also when you connect it for the first time, you should check if you have the latest firmware, so just go here to firmware update, and currently the latest version is 2.16. Alright, so basically that's it. 
And now to play with mouse and keyboard, we just start up the Max Aim DI plugin. And then you will see here a controller. Now, first of all, you have to create a new layout. And after this, you can choose here some um, predefined layouts like Call of Duty Black Ops or something. So just load up um, anything here because yeah, um, the controls haven't been changed from Call of Duty. So you can use Black Ops. Basically, there are all the controls you also have in Advanced Warfare. And yeah, you maybe just have to rebind some things. Now I have the Xbox One, so I will just switch the controller, which you can do right over here. So let's switch to the Xbox One controller. And yeah, you can see here a lot of buttons, like you can also rebind those buttons. For instance, if you don't want to have the left bumper here on Q, or for instance here this button here on Space, then you can easily change it. So you just have to double click it or right click, I think. Then you just go here to Keystroke, and then you can input a new Keystroke. And you can also, for instance, bind those buttons here to your mouse, like um, in Call of Duty, for instance, if you want to aim, you can use the right mouse button. And here under the layout options, you can also load up scripts. Here we have, for instance, a device monitor. So what you can see here is that on the left side, this is the input side. So here the Xbox One controller is connected, and on the right side, you can see the output side. And yeah, always make sure that your controller is here on the left side, because if there is nothing and it says connect controller, and this here is not working and yeah it took me some time to figure this out and then it was working okay then here we have for instance capture mode and if you enter this one here then you can see here a little bar which fills up and this is basically when i move my mouse and you can see it oversteers a bit so left and right then i get into the red bar here and this means it's too much then you can just go here to the layout options and here you can see mouse settings and here you have to play around now, I did really spend two hours here in the settings in order to find the best settings. And the mouse dots per inch, so they should just um, be adjusted to your mouse. This depends on what mouse you're using. But yeah, um, stick size on maximum, I don't know why. Then here we have smoothness, so just keep it on 50. The acceleration depends on um, what you like, so I play with something like 0 0.4. Then sensitivity, so um, this should be quite high in order to get um, some good results. Then here we have stick size, so keep that on maximum at the dead zone, something between 20 and 25. So that were the perfect settings for me, but it really depends on how you play, what mouse and keyboard you have, and this is really hard to find the correct settings. And you can see, yes, it oversteers, but only if I push the mouse very hard in one direction. All right, now you will see a bit gameplay with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and yeah, I'm not really good in this game, but yeah, I just want to show you how it feels when you play with mouse and keyboard on your console. Okay guys, we're now in the game. This is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And yeah, let's just see how it feels with the Titan 1. Now this is the second time I play with the Titan 1. And I have to say the feeling is a bit like on the computer. As you can see, um, it's much more snappier than with the controller. So if you fly around, for instance, it's much better to control the gun. But yeah, it feels a bit different than on the PC because you have a dead zone on the controller. I mean, you can configure this, but you really have to play around with the settings. And until you find the correct settings for you, so for your gaming style, this can take up to a week or something. So there are many things to tweak. And you also have to play around with the DPI settings of your mouse. So for instance, I can adjust my mouse. And yeah, it really depends also on which DPI you're using on the mouse. And you can see, um, it's much more snappier than with the controller. For instance, if I fly around here and then just turn around, then I wouldn't be able to do this, or it would be hard on the controller because I would have to play with a high sensitivity. And I have to say, this feels really nice on the Titan 1. But yeah, Call of Duty isn't the best game. Now, let's just check out the options because here we can see sensitivity, the maximum level here is 20, so you have to play around with this too, your mouse and the settings of the Titan 1. And also in Call of Duty, you have that shitty auto-aim, you know. You just turn into the direction of the target, then it auto-aims and also, yeah, makes the whole movement slower. And, yeah, this feels really strange to play with, because if you have mouse and keyboard, you don't need that auto-aim thing. I mean, you can turn it off, but then, yeah, it feels a bit better, but with auto-aim, it's more easier, but it feels strange, because it doesn't feel like on a computer, it feels like some, some mixed-up thing. And there are many, many things to tweak, as I've said before, so just make sure you check out the options. But I'm very excited to play with the Titan 1 and the Logitech G27 Forza 5 on the Xbox One. I cannot wait to do this. 
and I will also upload a gameplay with that. Now if you want to see more gameplay on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare then just leave me a comment down below in the description and I will try to record a footage over the weekend and then just upload it or something. But I really have to get used to this because I'm not playing as good with the Titan 1 as I play with the controller. Now this is really strange because you actually think you play with mouse and keyboard and this is so easy you will pawn everyone. But no, you have to get used to this if you play a very long time with the controller then it's actually not that easy to play with mouse and keyboard on the console. This is a whole different feeling. And it also feels different if I would now play one week here with the Titan 1 and then go back to the computer. But I have to say um, in some games this can be really really good because for instance Battlefield Hardline where you have um, long distances and with a sniper rifle and mouse and keyboard this is definitely more awesome. Than with the controller but yeah in call of duty not the best at auto aim shit and i really don't like this game but um this was just a quick test with the titan one in call of duty advanced warfare i hope you liked it as you can see i don't play that good and also with the titan one it feels a bit strange but yeah um just check out some other gameplays on youtube there are awesome gameplays and i can say there is absolutely no input lag if i move the mouse here then it also moves the gun in the game, absolutely no input lag. And that feels really great, but yeah, um, you really have to get used to this because um, I was just thinking, where the fuck is the button for melee attack? And yeah, it was bound to Q or something. And yeah, you have to get used to the keybinds, but you can bind it to every key on the keyboard, for instance, also macros, if you have a keyboard like the Logitech G105, you can bind it to the, to the G buttons on your keyboard, and this feels really, really cool. But yeah, I'm not playing with any Excel stuff or anything because um, <laughs> I don't know where the button on the keyboard is. And you really have to get used to the keybinds and this can really take some time. But the performance absolutely nice. So definitely a very good um, investment because it actually just retails for $60. And on the Xbox 360 or the Xbox One I also don't need the Bluetooth dongle. So you can get the Titan 1 here for about $60 and it's definitely worth it. Oh yeah, now that was my review of the Titan 1. As I've said, I really love this device, pretty good investment. And I will also upload a footage with the Logitech G27 and Forza 5, so stay tuned guys. If you want to see more console videos, just leave a comment down below in the description. Then thank you so much for watching and I really hope I see you again in my next videos. Have a nice day and bye bye.